Let's look at some uh, techniques for making uh, fancier plots. Uh, we'll also uh, look at uh, drawing lines in three dimensions, actually, in this section. So uh, let me click over here. Here we go. So um, the, the plot uh, command will take additional um, arguments where you can specify uh, um, a color, um, a marker, and then also a line style. So, uh, you know, let me, let me, I guess it's probably easier to illustrate. Um, let me just generate a vector from 0 to 2 uh, pi with 100 points. Um, and then let's say plot x and sine of x. So here's what the standard plot looks like. Um, let me bring up a new figure window, a second one, so we can put these kind of side by side for comparison. But then now, um, you know, in the previous one, I um, use use the default color. I can I can say I want a red line. Okay, so let me so here's with the red line. I can also actually have it show. Um, uh, the markers, uh, these are the data points at which uh, the line is actually plotted. So here there's actually a hundred data points. So if I pull that up, actually that's uh, a few too many data points. Let me change this so um, that maybe I've got uh, 20 points. It's going to show things a little nicer. So these are the, the 20 points. And here, notice it's, it's not actually showing the line connecting it. It's showing just the, 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 the uh, 20 data points between 0 and 2 pi. I can have it show a line by including uh, the dash option. So here's the original. Then here's what the modified one looks like. Now with the line, I, I've got different line styles I can use. This is a, a dashed line, and now instead of a, a solid line, or similarly, I can show, um, I think it's just a period will give me a dotted line. Uh, that's just showing uh, the points. Um, here's a dash dotted line. Yeah. So again, you can tell what all of the different options are here uh, by using help plot. And what I'm varying now is actually using uh, varying the format string. And with the format, you can specify. Um, you know, a line style, you can specify the type of marker, and then also the, the color. K is black because uh, B is actually used for, for uh, blue. The other thing that you can um, specify is uh, property value pairs in addition to the format line. So here I can, I can do things like change the line width, the uh, line style or marker size. So for example, um, one of the things I usually like to do is uh, plot with uh, a thicker line. So I type in uh, the property as line width in quotes, and it takes a numeric value. So um, I'll double the, the width of the line. Okay, so I can I can even make this uh, more extreme, you know, make the line width uh, ten, so which will give me a really thick uh, line, um, and you know the other thing you can do was maybe I want the markers the square markers to maybe be a little bit bigger. Uh, that's the original plot. So this this is showing the 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 uh, square is a little bit um, bigger. So you you can again there are a bunch of these different property value pairs that you can actually change. You can find more information if you do look at doc line properties. 
this will actually do a search in the documentation, and then the line properties, then it tells all of the different properties um, that are available. I will mention one other thing. Um, back to the command window there's another way to you know here I uh, another way to specify the color you know this for example will give me a green line so that's the green line another way we can specify colors is using what's known as the um, RGB specification, the, the amount of red, the amount of green, the, and the amount of blue that, that go into the line. And these are values that go between 0 and 1. So 0 red, 1 green, and 0 blue is another way to actually give me a green line. You know, similarly, black would be actually zero 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 to give me a, a black line or um, what's red and blue is going to give me a purple line okay uh, like a magenta like thing of course I can uh, I'm sp using one values here I can actually maybe do 0.5 red and 0.5 green with full blue and I get this corresponding color that's a bit more of a purple um, of course if I make them um, all the same value I'll get uh, a gray line a gray colored line as opposed to black and again I you know one of the things that I commonly do is I don't like the default default line width that octave uses I prefer using slightly wider lines so make that line a little thicker so it, so it shows up a little better. So lots of different options here you, you can use for, for making uh, um, uh, your, your plots a little more interesting, adding color, different line styles. Um, that's particularly important if you plot, if you do multiple plots on the same graph. Um, this, this shows, uh, this slide is actually talking a little bit about uh, the MATLAB graphics window. The Octave one is a little bit different. You can zoom in and zoom out and, and drag, the, uh, 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 drag the graph around. The other thing that you can do here is, is save this as an image file. So the default type is this Octave figure file. Um, and then you can read that in, but a, a standard graphics image file is maybe a, a GIF file. Um, if you save it in this, this GIF or PNG format, and all you have to do is, is specify the right file extension, and it'll save in that format. You can easily import the, the image then into your, into your Word document or something like that directly from this file menu. I think last time I showed you how to do this from cut and paste. There's another way to do that. There's a print command to actually copy the, the plot um, um, into a file as well. Okay. Um, so, and you can, um, you know, here's, here's one where it's using a, a dash line with square markers and they're changing the line width. The color for the line is red, 100. Changing the marker edge color to black, the marker face color to green, and the marker size of 10. So, you know, to get, you know, all kinds of different uh, um, variations here on 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 what the the fine details of your plot looks like. Uh, so we've been using a, you know a standard uh, what's called a, a Cartesian plot. Um, you can also do what are known as logarithmic plots, uh, semi-log in the x-axis or semi-log in the y. So this is plotting uh, a, this is doing a semi-log y plot. You can also do log log on both axes, where it plots your data versus uh, a logarithmic scale. Um, log log would, would be on both axes. Semi-log y just uses a log scale on on the y-axis. Of course, if you uh, plot exponentially increasing data against the log axis, it'll, it'll appear linear, and that's what they're showing here. And these different plotting functions all take the same arguments as plot 
for line color, uh, specifying points, and things like that. Uh, this is showing actually plotting a curve in three-dimensional space. Time here is a parameter, and then we're using uh, x and y. x is the sine of this vector, y is the cosine. If you plotted this uh, parameterized function in two-dimensional space, it would plot a, a circle. But if you let the z-axis, the z-coordinate, be time, it, it, it plots out a, a spring or a coil as a function of, of time. And you see here, now we have to use the plot three command instead of the 2D plot command, the regular plot command to plot in, in two dimensional space. We have to plot our, uh, pass it our X, Y, and Z vectors. And then I'm gonna take the same arguments as um, uh, the, the 2D plot command for setting the line width and color. And you can set the limits on the X, Y, and Z axis now using the X limb, Y limb command. Let's see if I've still got a plot up here. Um, this is my active plot. So you notice here, um, I uh, the, my data goes out from zero to two pi, but uh, the default plot command extended um, the, the graph uh, beyond where I my plot actually goes. Um, that's a handy use for, for using um, X limb that I want to limit my x-axis from 0 to 2 pi instead of having it going out to the automatically chosen value of 7. And then now my data, my plot fits neatly within my, uh, uh, my x-axis and fills up the whole uh, box. So you can change the x and y limits and z limits. And we've looked at using y, y label and z X label before to label the different axes. There's a lot of different um, uh, options you can use. Uh, look at look at the help on the axis command if, if you actually want. If if you plot um, you know uh, just a, a regular circle, it'll come out looking like an oval due to uh, the way the x and y axes are scaled differently. If you want it to look like a true circle, then you can use the, the square option so that the, the axis looks like a, a box instead of this uh, rectangle. So uh, I'll make that change here, although you really won't see uh, much of an effect. In this particular case, other than now, my, my box is a square box. And if my x, lim x limits and y limits were the same, then you know if I plotted a circle here, um, it would appear as a circle. Otherwise, it's going to look like some sort of oval. Uh, so different options there. Another option is, is actually doing subplots. So um, uh, with the subplot command, this is the I can divide the plot window up into two rows and three columns, and then this would mean make the first subplot active. So actually, let me close my windows I've got here. Okay, and then you know I'll typically do something like this. Um, um, subplot two rows, uh, one column divided up in the window just up into its entire width. And then I, I want to plot into the first subplot window. Okay. And what I get back is um, uh, my graphic window pops up like this. But then now let me plot, repeat my data previous line and then now that's plotted actually in the in the top part now the top plot in the bottom part of that same window subplot uh, 2 comma uh, 1 comma now the second window and then let me just change this to the cosine so it's something different And then there we've got it uh, like that, the sine at the top and the cosine at the bottom. Or I can do something like 2, 2, and then now this would be a 2 by 2, and then I want to plot into the third window, which would be the bottom left. And I get this. So I've still got my sine along the top. Now the, the cosine I had plotted across the bottom now has been overwritten by this. But now I could also you know do yet another one in the bottom right position. I'll do the same plot again. So now I've got one one top 
one plot across the top that spans the entire column. Then to do the bottom, the bottom two plots, I divided the plot window up into a two by two grid and then plotted into the third and fourth spot. So you just need to call subplot before the uh, the plot command. Another thing that's often useful is if you want to plot multiple lines in the same plot. I can do that actually by passing additional you know x and y values. The other way to do that is is to say hold on that means uh, keep my current graph there but now I'm going to plot in the same subplot and then now you'll see I've got both of those both the sine and cosine plotted in that last selected window and if I continue to plot it'll continue to add additional lines to this last subplot or whatever last whatever subplot you had last selected, um, you don't have to be using uh, subplots for this. You know this applies to regular plots when you're plotting to the full window as well. So the hold is useful when you want to plot multiple lines, um, and then you can close particular fig figures. You can open up multiple figure windows with the with the a uh, figure command you can also have a particular figure window get the receive the current plot so here this is act activated figure window 2 so now if i do another plot it, it will appear here and i've still got figure 1 and i can open up I, I don't think there's any limit on the number of figure windows that you can actually activate um, you can close uh, particular windows or um, uh, close them all and again um, typically you would be doing these plots from within a within a script instead of typing them in at the command line like I'm doing here okay um, so uh, again you can copy paste into and again this is talking about the MATLAB window which is a little different than that and has a few more features than the octave window with the octave window you can directly cut and paste or save it as a figure and then import it and this is showing in MATLAB how to actually save uh, save a, a, a figure as an image file again it's pretty similar to what you do in, in octave okay so here's the uh, advanced plotting exercise it's a modification of our uh, plot send function so uh, that it's it's supposed to plot uh, when called with one argument it does it does as it did before it, but not plots um, with uh, squares marking the points and using a dash red line of thickness 2 um, and then the marker faces are all supposed to be black and if there are two inputs um, open uh, open a, a, a new new figure with two axes like is shown on, on the bottom right here so you might want to pause the video th at this point uh, and work on this uh, a little bit this is what the author's code looks like for that solution so pause the video if you want to do this now otherwise I'm going to show you the answer on the next slide so you have to modify your code uh, so it looks like this um, you know again um, and then uh, this is the modification so you can make these changes to your plot send code to, to um, have it perform this way and make a fancier looking plot Whereas normally with plots we will add labels and titles and all of that stuff too okay um,